Okay, so we're going to look at uh, normal map baking in Maya today. So, um, let's put that to the floor. so um, <coughs> you, uh, this is basically where you have your standard low poly mesh, which in this case is just a bog standard cube, and you have your high poly mesh, which obviously has tons of high detail in it, um, and therefore wouldn't be suitable for use kind of in game. Uh, so. A couple of things to make sure you've done before you start this process. First one is make sure you've named your two models well. So I normally use the um, suffix underscore lo for the low poly model, so the one you're going to use in game. And I use underscore hi to underscore high for the high poly model. And obviously the same name for both. Good thing to do when you've got a few models as well is to keep them in separate layers as well. Okay, so when you actually bake your normal map, it's going to generate a normal map and it's going to use the UVs of your model to make that normal map. So obviously you need to make sure that your model is unwrapped before you uh, start this process. So just have a look at my unwrap. So just a basic kind of box unwrap that I have here. Um, other important aspects, uh, you want to make sure that your high poly model is placed directly on top of your low poly model, like that. Um, it has to be like that because basically it's going to uh, create a cage around your low poly model and fire rays inwards to find out where the detail is. So if the model's out here, it's going to fire rays in and it's not going to find anything. Uh, just to show you how I snapped that, I just held X down and just dragged along, so I'm snapping to the grid like so. So although my grid isn't visible, Maya will still pick up the grid is there. Um, you see I've got my outliner embedded here and I've done that just by using this button here so I can have full view and I can have my outliner there which is really useful for just selecting the models. Uh, okay, the last thing, let's have a drag this model back out. Um, in fact we'll just use the hide everything else button. Um, and let's just have a look at the way this is high poly has been modelled. Now, first of all, you can see that if I go to face mode, select a face on one of these, let's expand that. Uh, you can see that these aren't actually cut in to the model. And if we have a look here, you can see I've actually booleaned this shape out. So, you know, the geometry of the model isn't great. I've just used a standard boolean there. Um, and the reason I've done this is just to show you that. Uh, when you're creating your high poly model, you don't really need to worry about topology at all, not compared to your low poly one anyway. Um, and this is because this, this is only going to be used to bake the normal map, it's never going to go in game, so it's fine to, uh, uh, to basically uh, use kind of shortcuts when you Okay, so let's have a look at how we actually bake the normal map for this model. Now, the best thing to do is actually have your low uh, poly model selected. And if you just go to the rendering menu and then to lighting shading and then the transfer maps option. And um, if we have a look at our kind of base settings, we'll work our way down. Uh, the first thing is your target mesh. Now, this is the model that you're going to bake the normal map for. And uh, if you've actually got your model selected, it will automatically put that in. So let's just remove it though. So if you select the model you want and go add selected, you can also add it in in that way as well. Now if we go to source meshes, this is the um, where we put the high poly model. Now by default, it does use all other meshes, so it is just going to use that anyway. But I do want to sh um, make sure that you understand how this works. So you just select your model. Add selected. Okay, so the next thing we need to look at then is our envelope. So if you just come to display and just select envelope, you'll see how we now have this red translucent cube around our model. Now basically this is the where Maya is going to shoot rays inwards from this cube and when it hits a piece of geometry, that's what it's going to use to make the um, normal map. 
So if you just have the search envelope button here and just shrink this down, we can see here now I've shrunk it down, some of the geometry is not actually inside the envelope. And this is the important thing about this. You just need to make sure that this envelope model encompasses all of your high poly mesh. So if I just expand this out a bit, like so, you can see now that encompasses the entire mesh. So we know that our normal map should now benefit, uh, should now output fine. Right, so that's these two settings now done. If we go to output maps, you can see we can actually output a variety of different maps, but we're going to focus on the normal map. So if we just hit normal map, I'm just going to remove the old one. Um, now if, let's work our way down these settings. Now first thing you've got is your normal map save path. It saves as DDS by default, so we're going to change that to TGA. And I'm going to save this in my images folder. I'll just call this test down RM. See the one I did before just to make sure this would work okay. Uh, we should be set to tangent space, which is fine, and then we'll also use use mayor common settings. Okay, so this connect output maps, that's basically going to make a new shader and apply it straight to our low poly model. So um, we can have a new shader or an assigned one. If you do a new one, the problem with that is every time you bake it, it's going to assign a new shader, so you'll end up with tons of them. But we'll leave it on that for now. Uh, I'm just going to change my display back to mesh. Make sure we've got that selected. Okay, so in common output, first of all, set your texture size. I'm putting mine to 1024 by 1024. Uh, make sure your transfer is set to world space. Sampling quality, uh, we'll do this on low for now. Uh, but obviously you go up to high for your final version. Now texture seams basically refers to, if we just select our low poly mesh and the by UVs, it refers to the kind of seam here and here, like between different islands. So uh, this can stop any errors from happening on the edge of kind of UVs. So I kind of ramp it up to three, but you can test that out. The smaller the texture probably, um, the lower you would want that I guess. Um, okay, and then the last thing to change in advanced options, make sure you're on surface normals and uh, closest to envelope should be fine. Okay, so now we'll just hit the bake button. And it takes a few seconds, but once that's done, we can preview that. So if we open up our texture in Photoshop, we can see it's done a pretty good job. We've got a few border ed edge issues here, but we do have our details here. So we've got our free indents, our kind of screw bolt type things, and our boolean intersection there. So that's done a good job. Now um, a couple of things. When, I, when I've modelled this, notice how rather than do these flat on, I'll just show you what I mean by that. So I could have modelled the bolt just like that, just like a, um, a flat on cylinder. Now the reason I haven't done that is because that is just not going to work. You're not going to get any detail from that. In fact, we could probably just test this out real quick. If we just select these and do polygons mesh combine. Let's select a name. And we'll just do file to my scene size. Oh, I need to delete my history, that's why. Well, I messed that up a touch, but <laughs> there we go, we got there in the end. So um, if I select my low poly model again, go back to rendering, lighting, shading, transfer maps, and just hit bake. 
and we'll come back in and reopen that file. So notice how it has no um, that cylindrical detail we just added in is not there at all, and that's because it doesn't have any angle on it. See, because if you look at this directly from side on, and even turn that off, there's nothing there, is there? And that's why you need to make sure you have some kind of bevel on each of your um, each of your surfaces. So if we just select the high res one again. See there, I have a bevel in there, so you can see that. But from the side on, you can't see that one. So that's why you need to make sure you have this um, this beveled section on anything that you want to um, you want to normal map. Okay, so let's just move our high poly out of the way, none hide all, and if we just check our material you'll notice how we do have our normal map in there but nothing is being displayed at the moment and this is because you want to make sure you're on viewport 2.0 in order to actually see the normal map and here we can get a good contrast of how the normal map version looks compared to the high poly version so obviously a normal map is dependent on having light in your scene so let's just add a spotlight in the scene we will scale this up and go to lighting use all lights and you can quickly just kind of test out how this normal map, map is actually working so I'll drag that right into there and you can see here how these each of these sides goes from dark to light and that's just the normal map doing that I'll delete that out let's go back to use default lighting again so um, a couple more things I want to show you just things to be aware of uh, if you find let's just stick this back over here select our low again uh, if you haven't changed this to surface normals, if we just go to geometry normals and hit bake, and just reopen this file, uh, you'll notice how you start getting odd angles on each of these. So if you have that problem, that is because of of that setting there, not setting that to surface normals. Um, Remember what I mentioned about this new shader and assigned shader? So now if we just quickly check this, assign existing material, see how it's made quite a few new Lamberts now because we've baked this a few times. So it can be better just to make a normal map shader for this and just to change this to assign shader. Uh, when you are happy with your, um, with your final output settings, uh, make sure you set your bakes are high because although this is going to take longer it is going to be overall better quality uh, so that's about it that's how you bake your uh, normal maps in Maya so we'll have a look at a couple of other things how to bake normal maps in XNormal as well because Maya is good but uh, certainly XNormal offers you more flexibility and it tends to be faster as well at outputting a uh, a more kind of complex normal map because obviously what we have here is kind of quite quite basic. Uh, so, oh, the last little thing that kind of slight edges that we have, we you should be able to fix those by just increasing the fill texture seams option there. So let's just open this one now. There we go, that should be, if you zoom right in, you should find that is really kind of uh, the highest kind of quality you're going to get from Maya. Um, also with those lines, obviously a little thing you can do is just paint, pick on there and just paint over that with the kind of default purple. Like so. Or you should be able to just change your fill, text your seams up, maybe just one higher. Okay, so that's how you uh, normal map bake in Maya.